does everyone get this joke? <laughs> yeah, at the first time when I look at the picture for one minute, I didn't even know this was a joke. And jokes, like many things, change depending on different culture. What is funny in English might not make sense to people speaking another language. Today, I'm here to share my personal story about cultural difference. I'm Helen from Taiwan. I moved to Kasselgar last year. I spoke no English in Taiwan. After coming here, I have to speak English. However, English is my biggest challenge in Canada. When I knew I had to do a TED talk, I was so excited, but at the same time, I was so scared to mess it up. I never have a public speaking in my first language. However, now I have to use my second language to give a speech. So I hope I'm doing well. <laughs> and I like to challenge myself. Life is full of challenges and surprises. If you never want to try, then you will never feel how exciting it is to accomplish something which seems impossible for you. I was born and raised in Taipei, Taiwan. Seven years of my life was spent in a music school, so I can play three different instruments. I can play piano, and I can play double bass and I can play a kind of Chinese traditional instruments. I learned music not because I like it, but because my parents like it. <laughs> and why? I grew up in a big family with four other siblings. I'm the oldest one. My parents gave me high expectations, hoping that I, can, I could ace everything so that they could be proud of me. They care about my class rankings a lot, so I had to try really hard to keep up my performance. I was so stressed out that I involuntarily scratched my face really hard in my sleep. The next morning, I would find a lot of blood stains all over my face and fingers. The wounds usually take over four days to heal. I went to see many doctors, hoping to get rid of this compulsive behavior. However, nobody could help me. All they told me was to relax. However, being relaxed in a competitive music school was hard. From the time I was grade three, I needed to take not only general subjects like math, social studies, and sciences, but also music history, music theory, harmony, orchestra, piano, and double bass performance. After each test and audition, the teacher would post class rankings publicly on the front door so that people could check it out anytime. Usually, top students would have a lot of friends, but people with bad marks wouldn't have friends. I was so scared to be in the last place. My life at the time was hard, but I appreciate it when I look back. Those stressful days helped me to build up my knowledge and skills in music. Even if I haven't played piano for a long time, I could still play you a song if you can give me the music sheet. After seven years of hard working in music school, I decided to change my plan. I wanted to study in medicine, so I chose sound science courses in high school. I worked hard for three years, but I didn't do good on my university entrance exam. My father was not happy about my grades, 
so he sent me to a private school to prepare for the exam again. In the private school, I had to study 16 hours a day from Monday to Sunday for two years. Going to work out in the weight room was my only leisure activity. My only and top priority was to study hard, get good grades, enter into a top university. Finally, after two years more of hard work, I entered into a top university in Taiwan. Coming to Canada is one of my adventures I have had, but it was not a part of my life plan for the future. I was studying physical therapy in a top university in Taiwan. I thought I would finish my bachelor's degree, be a physical therapist for the rest of my life, get married, have kids, and buy a house. My life would have been happy to have this life. One day, my father told me to move to Canada with the rest of my family, even though I still had two years left to finish my bachelor's degree. My family was immigrating from Taiwan to Canada, so this forced me to make a difficult choice. At first, I didn't want to come because I didn't even know what my life would look like if I moved to Canada. However, I changed my mind after one year. I decided to come to Canada. I decided to take a big risk for my life. Last year, I started my, my first year of science classes at Silker. It was also my first time to study in Canada. I really like the classroom culture here. Instructors are supportive, helping teach students to success. I have a lot of friends from my class, and my classmates aren't always competing with each other. I really like the small community atmosphere in the Kootenays. People are friendly, genuine, satisfied, and happy. I spoke no English in Taiwan. However, after coming here, I have to speak English all the time. Speaking English is the only way to make more friends, so I had no friends. Because of language barrier, I'm not like who I was in Taiwan. I was talkative, outgoing, and sociable, but I'm not like that in Canada. Even if I'm getting better in speaking English, it is still hard to share deeper feelings like emotions, needs, values, and humor. Sometimes, I really want to share my deeper feelings with close friends, but I don't have the corresponding words to accurately express my thinking and my feelings. Someday, I hope to speak English as if it were my first language. Moving to a new country is not easy. I got a job after six months here. I was so excited to start my new job in an English-speaking country. However, I got frustrated and cried countless times at home or at my work. I work as a cashier in a fast food restaurant, so I have to take orders from customers. Some people get frustrated easily if they don't understand my accent. I try really hard to clearly pronounce my English. However, they don't even try to understand. They yell at me if I don't understand what they were saying. 
Sometimes customer ask for another cashier who can speak English, but I'm speaking English with them. Some people look down on me only because I don't speak perfect English. I really wanted to quit my job. But however, I didn't give up. Why? Because all hardship I experience will help me to grow. So I learned how to be nice to grumpy people. <laughs> <laughs> and I learned to overcome my frustration and keep a positive attitude anytime. Moving to a new country is really hard, and especially the language is totally different. I have to move out, move out of my comfort zone. Now I'm still struggling with English and with anything else in this culture. However, I will try, I will try my best to overcome all of life's challenges. Taking a big risk won't hurt you. All, harsh, all hardship in your life has its own meaning for your life. Life is short, so please enjoy your life. Constantly challenge yourself and keep learning always. Today, I want to challenge you to find what you love and pursue it. Eat well, work hard, and fall in love with everything. Thank you. Yeah.